got any, uh, I know you probably got a lot. We got a bunch with the Raiders. How about any Bear Bryant? Oh, Kid gosh. Get, where's Ken at? I, I want to hear when he, when he kicked you off. Coach Bryant. Coach Bryant. I hurt my knee in the spring after my junior year. We were number three, in the, we finished number three in the country, and I had a knee injury in the spring before my senior year. And Coach Bryant says, don't practice. Just stay off your knee and get your knee well and that sort of thing. And that sort of thing. And I got bored with the whole thing because I wasn't practicing and I didn't give a shit about school and things like that. And so I started kind of running around. We would have a study hall, 7.30 to 9 o'clock, over at, the, at Bryant Hall at the A-Dorm. And so I would take off from there after study hall at 9 o'clock, and I was running around with this girl in, in Mobile. And so I'd jump in the car and drive three and a half hours to Mobile, spend three and a half hours with my girlfriend, jump back in the car and drive three and a half hours back to Tuscaloosa, get back there at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning for an 8 o'clock class, which I never went to. <laughs> <laughs> and so Coach Brown suspended me. And he suspended me, and I got a telegram from him down at my parents' house. I got a telegram from Coach Bryant that says, you have been indefinitely suspended. I got a telegram the next day from Joe Namath, and it said he means it. Because <laughs> Joe had gone through the same, the same thing. And one of the hardest things I've ever had to, had to do was to go in and ask Coach Brown if I could get back on the team. Jimmy Sharp was a coach at Alabama. Uh, Pat Dye was a coach at Alabama then, and they just they took good care of me. I mean, they babysat me and tried to get me back eligible and that sort of thing. And I did. I went back to summer school and became eligible to play at Alabama. And then Jimmy Sharp, Pat Dye came up to me and he said, you got to go meet with Coach Bryant. you got to go in there and sit down with Coach Bryant and tell him that you're now eligible by SEC standards to play, to play football. So I went in there to sit down and talk to Coach Bryant and tell him that I was now eligible to play. Well, Coach Bryant's office, and they've got a replica of it in Bryant Museum now, and it's got his desk, and it sits on a platform about that high, you know, and it's got a couch, a couch right in front of his desk, and that couch is real soft, and you sink down in it, and so when you go in there to sit down and talk to him, you sit like this, and you talk to him kind of like this, you know, you're kind of looking straight up at him, just intimidated to hell and back, and so I go in there, and I tell Coach Bryant, I said, Coach, I'm now eligible to play by SEC standards, and I've gone back to summer school, and I've done everything necessary to, to play again. And he said, you don't deserve to be on this team. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> and so I said, well, I'm coming back out anyway this fall. He said, well, we'll see about this. So Jimmy Sharp and Pat Dye came to me later and said, Coach Brown says you can come back out for the team because you wouldn't take no for an answer. He says that's the reason he lets you come back out. So at Alabama, when you, come, when you play for Alabama, the color jersey that you wear dictates the team that you're on. The red jersey's first team, white jersey second team, blue jersey third team, orange jersey fourth team, fourth team, green jersey fifth team. And Coach Brown had a thing that he would call you when you were out of favor with him, when he was mad at you, you made a bad play, you didn't go to school, you, just, you screwed up, he called you a turd. And that sixth team jersey was brown. <laughs> and I was coming off of a junior year. I was SEC. I was an All-American player and All-SEC and MVP in the Sugar Bowl my junior year and that sort of thing. And I come back out after getting back on the team and I go get my basket from the equipment manager and I got a brown jersey in my basket. I'm a sixth team quarterback and I had to work my hardest thing I've ever had to do. I had to work my way back through all those colors, you know, work my way back through all those colors. And he had all kind of drills built for me, you know, that he'd go try to kill me. He took the linebackers and he'd line them all up there and the center and me under the center. And he'd say, all right, he'd take the ball and he'd sprint out and all the linebackers, and it was guys like Paul Crane and guys like Tim Bates and guys like Jackie Sherrill, all tough, tough people, you know. And I'm a, you know, little quarterback and I got to take the ball and sprint out and their job was to put a hat on me, put the hat on me, don't tackle him, just go <laughs> butt him, you know, and butt him in the face, butt him in the chest, butt him. and I had to sprint out this way, and all six of them, pow, 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 now go the other way, pow, 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 and I worked my way, that kind of drill, every day for three weeks, and I worked my way back up through all those jerseys, and there was no way he would ever let me start, you know, so I worked my way all the way back up to a white jersey, and I was second team, and Joe Kelly was going to start the game, we opened up my senior year with Florida State. We played for Bill Peterson was the coach then. We played Florida State in Birmingham. And so Joe Kelly was going to start. There's no way in hell he would let me start. And so we go out there and we win the toss. They kick off to us and we Joe Kelly gets the ball and we go three and out. We go three and out. Joe Kelly comes off and I'm standing right beside Coach Bryant. I'm standing right beside him, you know, and he's 6'4", 250. 
smoking that Chesterfield and that houndstooth hat, and you know, and I'm a skinny little kid from Foley. And I'm standing right beside him, and after we go three and out, second series, we get the ball back, and he hit me in the back and almost knocked, knocked the breath. Bow! Go! I said, go! Go play! And so I went back in, it was a 37-37 tie. We were number three team in the country. Florida State was not ranked at all. And we were 37-37 tie, and he took us back to Tuscaloosa and 6.30 the next morning, when we tell stories about yeah. him getting you back out there at 6 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning and then get you out there and run you to death and try to kill you. And, and that's the hardest thing I've ever had to do was get back on that team, go through moving up the food chain on that team and then, uh, and then, and then, and then getting, to, getting to play again. Yeah. Yeah. How'd y'all wind up that year? My senior year, but number seven in the country. Number we seven. were eight, two, and one, I think. Eight, two, and one. Tennessee won the SEC that year. The three varsity years we were there. We were 28, three, and two. We were 28, three, and two. Tennessee beat us my senior year. Tennessee tied us my sophomore year. Texas a and beat us in the Cotton Bowl my senior year. Georgia beat us my sophomore year, 18 to 17. We were 28, three, and two. We won two SEC championships, one national championship. But because of Coach Bryant is the reason I get to go to the next level because he wouldn't wow. let me throw it all away. And I was very capable of doing that, you know, by not conforming to his rules and not being what he wanted me to be and not being the kind of player I should be and doing what was right. But he grabbed me by the nap of the neck and kicked me in the ass and made me do what I was supposed to do. And, you know, as they say, it's history. Then I go in and play 15 years of pro football and without him saving me, so to speak, yeah. who knows, I'd be, you know, be doing something else. I'd be whatever, you know, bartending or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Brown. Yeah.